nice two stride across the middle. Maria's horse just touched the out of that double. Another high option. That was a beautiful jump. This is a hunt and go format, so that was the end of the classic round, and now begins the handy portion. Um, it's a two round class, uh, but the rounds are back to back. So the classic round is, you know, slower style, about beauty and normal hunter hunter round, uh, and then the handy round goes right into it after that. High option ox are in the corner. Horse is just getting a little tense through the transition. She covers well, it's a good trot jump. And then you end here on this last high option ox are towards home. It's a lovely round to get us started today. It's a great horse, very scopy. He jumped all the high options with ease, it's a good round. see the scoring in this event uh, can be a little confusing so even though it's technically a one round event the horses will be given two scores one for the first round and one for the second round the handy portion of it um, and those will be added together uh, to ultimately decide who wins this class lovely course today. Um, I'd say a very good mix of natural jumps. Uh, the high options are high enough, but not too challenging where you feel like you can't do them. Uh, and the handy is really nice, gives you a few options to go inside, show off a few places. Uh, Jason did a great job with today's course. Um, and it's a beautiful day, so, so I think we'll have some uh, good and rounds. And a two-point option bonus on the first phase for an 83 score and the classic round, and an 84 for on the handy judge with a one point bonus for an 85. They have a total of 168 for our total. And on to our second entry now. Here is the AI for Brady Mitchell on course now. Brady Mitchell showing as Sarah Charisma, on by the Ring family of Raleigh, North Carolina, number 866. Next in the ring, we have Brady Mitchell riding Sarah Charisma, owned by the Rain family. The Rain family, a uh, big supporter of the sport in all the rings. I believe this horse used to be a jumper, and Brady's uh, transitioned him quite nicely into being a beautiful hunter. He does the high performance division and the derbies. Quite scopy horse, beautiful across the ground. So you'll see the riders taking a little bit more time in this first phase, probably letting them take a little bit of a breath and try to jump a beautiful, seamless round through this oxer that he's headed to. Then you'll see the riders probably get a little more handy, the turns will be a little neater, and they'll try to get some added handiness into their score for this next portion. Jump. This rollback turn to that vertical comes up very quickly. He did a good job getting the horse's eye on it, letting him have time to gauge it. And a neat turn here. That's, that's a hay bale jump we can't quite see. Back to the trot jump here. Horse is just maybe getting a little tense. Very good back there. And then inside he went through the double to the last jump. It's a nice round. Very good round. Brady's quite happy with that.
for storage on 83 plus 2 for 85 for the classic round and a 86 plus 2 in a handy round for 88. Total score of 173 for Brady Mitchell, Sharon Charisma, leading the way right now with a 173. Greg Kovac will be our next slider to show on course for the opening round and he is aboard Testify. Testify is owned by John Cotton from Birth Point Farms, Michigan. They carry the number 6083, our third of 51 charters. Cut and go, $25,000 international hunter derby presented by Bruce. Next in the ring, we have Greg Krolik aboard Testify. This is a lovely, lovely horse. Um, Greg's had him for a number of years. Um, amazing derby horse, had lots of success. High performance, high performance confirmation, and really the derbies, I think, is his specialty. He's very scopy, makes beautiful jumps. This round so far looks excellently executed. This horse has beautiful expression across the ground. Wow, it jumped up beautifully. Greg's also an expert derby rider. He's had a number of top derby horses, won countless derbies across the country on all different mounts. Just touched that tall option vertical, but I think the horse still made a good effort. very handy. He's neat back on all the jumps. All the while it looks very seamless and effortless. The horse is so relaxed. Very good round. Very good round. That's one of my favorite horses to watch. He's so fun. Looks like he really enjoys his job. Um, very scopy. Could jump. Could jump a mountain. Check out Stork now for Testify. Greg Stork for the owner of downtown. In the classic round, an 88 base score plus 2 for a 90. Yeah, that was a beautiful round. Uh, the judges obviously really enjoyed it. Um, I thought that was a, a really good example of uh, how to execute the course today. That was beautiful. Clearly shown through the scores, and he's leading the way right now. Next, we have Magic Moments and Kate Haggerty. Uh, this is one of my favorite horses. Such a talented horse. He uh, really popped onto the scene this year at the Derby Finals. Uh, Brian Figus rode him, uh, had made beautiful rounds there, and what's probably one of the hardest hunter events. Um, Kate Haggerty then acquired him and has been pursuing him in some derbies and equitation, and he finished third at the medal finals this year with her. Uh, it's just such a special horse to watch. Really, really, really impressive. Kate's top junior rider, all three rings, junior jumpers, equitation, junior hunters. Just rubs the out of that double there. Wow, beautiful jump. Yep, 
This horse is so scopy, he can jump any jump. He just made that look seamless, effortless. This is definitely a horse I would want to ride and do in these classes. Looks like that's the track most riders are taking, kind of rolling back on the trot jump and then going through the in and out from the first round to the last jump. Looks like Kate just maybe got up the first line a little early. The horse has huge stride, um, and that's where the score came from from the first round. Um, probably just doing this class to get a little experience. You know, we have a number of big classes coming up in this ring. Uh, hunters in general do not get to get in this ring very often, aside from week six um, and a few other special events. Uh, her horse probably was doing this class with the idea to get in here before the equitation class at the end of WEF. <coughs> Next we have Hannah Isop on Clem Brocourt. This is a very talented chestnut mare. Hannah's had for a number of years campaigned in the derbies. Very talented horse, very sharp, correct jumper. And Hannah's so soft and allows all her horses to jump so freely. I think this is a really good match. She's gotten some great results with this horse. She maybe just looks a little tense in this first round. Hannah's doing a great job of giving her a confident ride, making this a good experience for her. Decide to, decided to jump the low options. Probably a good idea for this horse as she's very correct jumper and sharp, so she's just trying to give her a good, confident experience, not asking her to jump extra high as we know she can. Rushed that a little bit. Just gonna bring it home. Nice. Maybe the horse wasn't perfectly settled in today's class, but I think Hannah will be happy with the experience and she'll be ready for next time.
Testify, Greg Burley, the early front runner in our 100 Derby here today. Overall total score of 179, leading the way right now with four score or five scores. In. Next, we have Callie Seaman riding her own horse, Diamante. This is a very seasoned, uh, I would call expert at the derbies. Uh, this horse is Callie's own for a number of years. He's campaigned in the amateur owners, high performance, and the derbies. He's gotten top ribbons at derbies all across the country, including the derby finals. I believe he finished third with Callie's trainer, Patricia, a number of years ago. Again, a very scopey horse, brave, just what you want, the qualities you want for this class like this. Callie's having a lovely round so far. Again, you can see his immense scope. He jumped that jump. No problem, looked like you could put it up five more holes in beautiful style. He was quite good there. Beautiful ride. Callie is an amateur owner rider, um, so it's great to see some amateurs doing the derbies and pursuing this. Callie, I know, trusts this horse and knows him like the back of her hand. It's a beautiful round. That horse jumped. Beautiful, beautiful round. She should be thrilled with that. He looked so calm and confident. He just walked around the course. in after Diamante and Charlie Seaman, they had an 85 base score and a classic round plus two, and an 81 plus two in the handy round. That was a great round. Kelly should be thrilled with that. For a total of 170, total 170 now in third place. Okay, next on course we have the Rain, number 1300. Rain is shown by Christopher Payne, and the entry on course shown by Thomas to Charlotte, North Carolina. Score is entry number 1300, Rain. Next we have Christopher Payne aboard Rain, owned by Province LLC. They've been a longtime supporter of Chris and uh, the whole New Hope team. This is a absolutely stunning horse. Chris has had him for a long time, been bringing him up through the ranks. This horse actually was the winner of the Green Incentive Championships a few years ago. He now does the high performance with Chris. Absolutely beautiful horse, beautiful mover. Um, just everything you want to see in a hunter and Really beautiful for a derby horse, too. It's beautiful. Oh. Looked like the horse just got a little confused there uh, with these. You know, the horses aren't quite used to this ring. Like I said, we don't really get to get in here a lot. And the horse almost looked like he thought uh, the line should have gone and landed and gone right. And uh, Chris was trying to tell him, no, we're going left, and just got a little confused with the leads, and then I think he was just a little distracted, headed to this uh, high option out of the turn. 
Chris is just letting him take a minute. Knows obviously it's not his day. He's just letting the horse have a good experience, take a look at it, and get a little more confident for next time. For sure, he's gearing up for the horse to do the week six championships on, so... Yeah, horse comes back, has no problem. Chris is a beautiful rider, very soft, very calm, always lets his horses jump so free and out of stride, giving him a pat, you can see he's letting him just regroup, take a breath. Gonna save the bigger jumps for another day. This horse, like I said, does high performance, but he's just jumping low jumps, letting him kind of settle into the ring, the atmosphere a little. Now he's making very good round. can see now the horse is already way more settled. He's relaxed. He's putting his head down. Chris is doing a beautiful job. And finish is quite nice. Wasn't their day to day, but uh, Chris has won so much on that horse, and he'll continue to do so. And I think finished the round obviously much better than it started. And that horse has a, had a great experience, and I'm sure he'll be ready for next time. Next in the ring we have Brooklyn and Victoria Colvin for Martin Schleppi. Um, this horse is trained and brought to the ring with Johnny and Kitty Barker. Uh, Martin is a longtime supporter of theirs. He's owned a number of very famous horses. This is a greener horse. I believe this is a first year horse. Probably doing this class, getting some experience. Really nice start. Tori is obviously one of the best hunter riders of all time, uh, and specifically, for sure, one of the best derby riders of all time. Tori's one of the only a few that's won the derby finals. She actually won it three separate times on three separate horses, so obviously a veteran of classes like this, so you can see her calmness, composure, and even though this horse is maybe a little greener, you couldn't you couldn't tell this horse is having a beautiful go around today with Tori. Rubs the in of that in and out there, and the out just catches it behind. She's just jumping the lower jumps today. It's probably smart with him being maybe a little greener to these classes. Jumped that beautifully. Excellent jump there. Tori's one of the most handy riders I think there has ever been. 
her ability to do less strides and turn short back to jumps without any difficulty in making it look just seamless is incredible and I think something to learn and watch from. Beautiful. Just hesitated for a second. She slips inside. Finishes that round nice. I think they'll be quite happy with that round. Now in the ring we have Just Imagine and Carl Whedon. And I'm joined now by Sissy Wicks. Hello, good afternoon, Jeffrey. Nice to be here. Thank you for joining me. Beautiful day for a hunt and go. Absolutely. How many horses have gone? I'm sorry I was late, but um, it's a busy day here. Yes, I know you're very busy. Thank you for making time. This is, I believe, the 10th horse in the ring. And the winner so far is? So far, Greg Krolik is winning with Testify at a beautiful round. Um, Greg's such a veteran at these, at these derbies. He, yes. he always seems to rise to the occasion and yeah. has an incredible track record in these derbies. He does. And how is the course? I, I was in the jumper ring, so I wasn't able to, watch to uh, walk this course. So Cor how's the transition from the hunter part to the uh, handy part? The course is lovely, um, nice single jump to start, a few lines up at the top of the ring, and then the handy portion begins after this high option oxer, the brown oxer in the corner that Carl's passing right now. Are there a lot of options on the handy course where you can get twisty and turny? Um, there are a few, yeah. you could. Uh, we saw Maria Rasmussen went first, and she actually slipped inside the in and out there and went back to the trot jump quite quickly most people are going just inside the first jump that fuzzy jump to get back to the trot and then they're slipping through the in and out to get to the last jump carl's horse looks like she's just giving a little confidence and going nice around yeah i know she has a few new horses in her string so yeah. my guess is this horse is and she are learning each other a little bit yep Well, the course is beautiful here, as always. Beautiful. 
It's a warm, sunny day in South Florida, and we're lucky to be here in, in that weather. It is. I think we're going to see some top rounds today. I was wondering if it's going to be a trot jump. It, it's so funny, even at this level, how many people just hate trot jumps. Are you in that camp? Um, it, I, I do know that a lot of people dislike them. I personally do not have a problem with them, and I actually enjoy them. But uh, I know they can catch a lot of horses off guard, so people get a little frustrated with them. Yes, it's, it's a bit of a controversial topic with some people, which is funny. Yeah. Yeah. So the 38 and the 75 reflecting the stop in the first part of the course, yeah. and then she held the horse's hand and went around very nicely in the handy part of the course. Next we have Jean Sheptoff and Camillo VDL. Jean's had this horse for a number of years, and he does the high performance in the derbies with her. It's a lovely horse. She is a, one of the top amateur riders in the country. Yes. Out of Connecticut, right, I think? Yes. New York, Connecticut, Connecticut. So nice to see these amateurs doing these derbies, too. Absolutely. We have a, a young amateur, a, a first first year amateur doing her first derby today so she's super excited about it and I think that's what's fun about this whole class is that it can appeal to all levels and people work toward it um, and they want to make sure they're ready to do it and and then they look forward to it with lots of excitement and anticipation and it's uh, it's a it's a great addition to our hunter world here it is great and I'm so glad to see some juniors amateurs doing it This horse is a fabulous jumper. So scopy. She does a great job, I think, just kind of coaxing him around. Yeah. He looks like he could get a little bloody, a little bit of blood. Yeah, I believe he used to be her jumper and transitioned him over. And He's so beautiful. You, you look at him and think hunter, right? Yeah. Wow. So scopy. Yeah, he looks like he could jump a mountain. Yeah. A little few steps across Canada there. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's just building a mm -hmm. little as the round goes. And as you doing a yeah, great as job. you know, sometimes it, these jumpers, when you start doing the handy portions, especially if they haven't come out and settled, right, um, they can think they're in a jump off. They again. think jump <laughs> off. You're so right, Sissy. Under the time. Yeah. She's amazing. That was really incredible. Yeah, great rider. And a top derby horse, you know, he might not be quite settled today, but Jean's gotten a number of top ribbons with him, derbies all across the country. Mm. Good finish. And as we said, there's there's a lot of excitement, not only from the riders about being here, but the horses get excited. It's a huge ring. There are flags everywhere. There are people kind of scattered all over the ring. And yeah. there's just a ton of atmosphere, which... We talk about in Kentucky for the Derby Finals. Yes. And it's very much the same situation here, I think, wi where the horses walk in and they think, okay, we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> exactly. This they know it's a little special. Yeah, exactly. So I think the lower yeah, handy score just reflecting the fact that he got a little ready and a little at it. Yeah. What a great horse. Yeah. Number 4703. Next, we have a Vito Sun Z and Claire Bengret. <coughs> so, Jeffrey, you opted out of out of this week. I'm surprised. You usually have horses in this, multiple horses. 
I did. Um, I've historically always made week four uh, sort of an off week for my horses, uh, and uh, I try to gear them up weeks five and six. So although I would love to do this class, it uh, just doesn't work quite right with my schedule. Yeah, so that makes perfect sense to me. I mean, y you want to, I assume you're trying to... Uh, to hit your lick in, in uh, on week six, yes, <laughs> which is the big WCHR Hunter work week here in Wellington. We have the huge Peter Weatherall class on Saturday night, which you have to qualify for. Yes, hundred thousand dollar class. So um, it's it's like a good tennis player, right? You want to peak at the big competitions, and you're going to peak on week six. We hope. Exactly, that's the hope. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of riders are doing this class. Uh, for them and their horse to get in this ring and maybe prepare for that that week in class a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, the atmosphere can be a lot. So this horse is maybe just a little nervous and holding his breath and looked like he just took a little peek out of that vertical out of the turn. And for those listening, we as hunter people don't get the opportunity to ride in this ring. Yeah. It's not a thing that we do on any kind of weekly basis. So this class, and um, I think this is it before we get to week six when we can do some performance classes and the juniors and amateurs and reckon that what we call professional recognized divisions can show in here. Yes, they uh, added uh, one class next week that I'm excited to compete in, the $100,000 <laughs> team right. event, um, which is new to us this year. So we're excited about that. That's right. So that is a new class. I forgot about that. It's a, it's a team event. So it's a professional, a junior, and an amateur makes up a team. You can uh, you choose your own team and enter. Yeah. And it's for uh, th the benefit of the Neil Hirsch Boys and Girls Club, which is a fantastic um, organization down here in South Florida. Yep. And they have a location quite near the showgrounds and the Boys and Girls Clubs provide a lot of services and sports and companionship and all kinds of things for underserved kids. Yeah, I think it's great. I know Andrew Lustig was big in uh, organizing that and I think uh, it's so nice that hunters have another kind of uh, special important class to look forward to. It's, it's going to be fun. I think it's, is it next Friday night? Is it is, yeah, next so Friday night. Under the lights. Yep. That'll be exciting for riders and horses alike. Yes. But well done, Andrew. It's, it's such a great cause. I can't say enough about the Boys and Girls Club. It's nice for the Hunter community to get involved in those charity events. It is. Next we have Haley Goodry riding Symbolic. This is a very seasoned horse. Competed in the Junior Hunters and Derbies for a number of years. He just looks like so much fun to ride. Who did he compete with? Uh, Haley does him in the Junior Hunters. Um, before, Rylan Conway and Bella Kay out of Texas. Um, I know he has a lot of experience in these Derbies and the Derby Finals, so brought a lot of kids along. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Looks like Haley's doing a good job. Yeah, she had a kind of a long distance and he gave a little nod up there, which yeah. I loved. He was more than ready to do that for her. Yeah. little slow to that vertical. She's just going to go around the first jump. Looks like her horse is maybe just getting a little excited. It's going to take her time to the trot jump. Really nice. Slips inside. Nice finish. That last oxer is toward the gate, and it's big. Yes. And the horses, again, are kind of excited by the handy element, so 
we can get some real enthusiasm there. Yeah, I know as from my experience with my some of my horses, uh, when they shake their head or give a little uh, excitement after a jump, I don't mind it. But as a judge, what do you think about that? I know there's a little back and forth on it. You know, I think that there's a difference between exuberance and expression mm -hmm. and disobedience. Yeah. I don't think that's a disobedience. Yeah. I think I, I love to see horses enjoy what they do. Yeah. And um, it really doesn't bother me. If they put their head between their knees and crow hop, <laughs> yeah. that's a little different. Yeah. But just that head shake or the, again, the little expression, I, I love to see it. Yeah. This is a beautiful horse, isn't it? Yes, this is Valentino, ridden by Ava Barnes. Uh, trains with Chris Payne and David Belfort. He's a top junior rider. Very nice start. Very nice start. Who is judging out here? I didn't even look at that. Uh, Robin Swinnerman and I didn't catch the other judge. Well, if anybody's listening wants to text us and let us know who's judging. This horse looks very relaxed, confident. Ava's just able to focus on the round and have some fun out there. He's got such a metronome of a yeah, canner, doesn't beautiful he? beautiful across the ground. He just walks these jumps. Beautiful. Everything right out of stride. That's yeah. what we want to see here. She made that fit quite nicely. Mm -hmm. Wow. Horse really jumped up there. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay, we'll see if she steps it up a bit for the handy, right? I believe Ava competes with this horse in the equitation sometimes, so all these handy elements, trot jump, he looks like a master at that. Beautiful. Oh, what a veteran, right? Yeah. Never looked right or left. I love it. And holding his lead, not getting confused. Look at that. That was a great round. That was gorgeous. Now, again, we're watching the screen like everybody else is, so if, if we get very uh, excited about a round and the scores don't reflect, we obviously miss something. <laughs> But that looked gorgeous for where yeah. we're sitting. That was a great round for a young junior rider. Absolutely. Fair reading news from our panel of judges. Uh, again, zero on the uh, high outfits. 82 and 82 for the one. 64 total. 8-2 and 8-2 point, f what? 82 and 82. 82 and 82. Yep. I think she'll be happy with that. Yes. Next up we have Mindful and Jennifer Hannon. Talk about uh, der veteran derby horses. Yes. I think when a lot of people think derby horse, this is the horse that comes to mind. Yes, this is the currently competing horse that comes to mind. Yeah. Absolutely. Jenny's had so much success on this horse and manages him so well. He's more than a veteran. She plans his schedule diligently, and he really, at this point, I think, comes out for just these big special events and seems to always shine in them. I believe she won this derby a few years back 
on this horse. She very well could have. She's his resume is quite illustrious. Beautiful. One thing I love about Jenny and this horse, she always works out of a gallop. This horse just ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. It's excited. I think he was just a bit surprised yeah. there too, don't you? Looked like he thought he was going right. Exactly. So beautiful across the ground. If you have any questions for Jeffrey or for me, you can send them to us on Instagram. Jeffrey Hessling, Sissy Wicks. I think it's kind of fun to do that when we're sitting here for a yeah. couple of hours and people can feel involved. Beautiful, he's so scopy. Yeah, that was a little bit of a stutter. So we'll, we'll see what the judge, there's one judge at each, each place, correct? Yes. So we'll see what the judge does for that. In other words, one judge for each round. I guess sh I should be more specific for each, uh, one for the classic, one for the handy. So nice to see a horse like this year after year be able to just continue to do these classes and do them so well. Jenny's yeah. so good at managing horses that way. And this horse started with Kelly Farmer. Yes. I mean, it had a, as good a start as any nice animal finish. can get. And Jen has took the reins from her, and the horse's career has continued yeah. brilliantly. We'll see what they do at the beginning of that little misdirection. 92. Wow, 94, yep. Amazing. Great round. Good for her. Yeah. Think of what you were saying earlier. They didn't mind it, thought the horse was a little enjoying his job and showing some some excitement for putting in some good efforts. This is one you could maybe bet on winning. What do you think? I, this I, pair. This pair, yes. This this pair's had an amazing year. Uh, won the Derby Finals. Beat me. I finished second behind him. Uh, just an absolutely very similar to the last horse. I think exactly what you'd want in a horse to do a class like this. So scopey. Beautiful canner, lands both leads, and obviously John, same thing. He is a master class in these. Master, yep. Um, yep. If there's anyone you'd want to ride a horse in a derby, it'd be John, in my opinion. Beautiful. He's the USCF Equestrian of the Year. Yes. Which is so cool. He had a great speech everybody should um, listen to on YouTube. Horse just rubbed that tall vertical behind a little. Looked from there like he jumped it well, yeah. but <laughs> we're looking through the judge's box. Meredith Lipke, the owner of this horse, I know is a huge supporter of the sport and John and has just been so great in letting this horse pursue obviously he's so talented in the derbies i think she's so great beautiful jump there i love seeing how he ha just kept a little bit left of center there to that two stride yeah so that he could manage that right hand turn yeah that was it's so a little bit of a riding lesson this. yep very sharp turn the horse jumps that beautifully I don't know. This is looking pretty good. Yeah. So smooth. Yep. Beautiful. 
beautiful. And John is just so composed and <laughs> looked like the horse maybe just got a little confused going through the in and out there. Yeah. And uh, just maybe didn't get his eye on the last jump. I think I jinxed him. Yeah. Well, we've done that. Nonetheless, great horse, great rider, and they've accomplished so much, and they'll continue to win He's so much incredible. more. Yeah, absolutely incredible. That horse is such an athlete too. He looks like he could do just about anything. Yeah. All right, let's see what his scores are. So clearly the first round, quite, quite competitive, would have finished just behind mindful, but the second round just, I think that last jump is why the score is reflected. Well, it was long and flat for those of you watching it. Yeah. Next we have In Writing, ridden on, owned by Sterling Malnick. It's another one of my favorite horses. Absolutely beautiful hunter. She's won a lot in the junior hunter division and now I think wants to focus on the derbies with him. And Wow. And beautiful. she's beginning her jumper career. Yes, she's riding with Laura Crowd in the jumpers and getting a lot of experience traveling the world. So this class, I think, will be a piece of cake. Yeah, it's amazing how that translates, right? Yeah. Jumper to hunter, and hunter to jumper. Hunter yeah. equitation to jumper, too. Beautiful horse. Whoop. A little peek, maybe? Yeah, just looked like took a little stare at that, and she was very diligent and said, come on, we're getting over this. This horse was produced by Kelly Farmer previously to her, now trained by Bill Schaub and Stephen Gregorio. Wow. I know. <laughs> Incredible. Happy boy. Yeah, maybe just a little cheeky today, but yeah. still making beautiful efforts. And Sterling's just giving this horse a great, brilliant ride. She really is. I remember her on ponies, right? Yeah. Not that long ago. I know. She's so polished and poised. Great jumper. Another horse that I would love to ride. Looks so much fun. He does look like fun. He looks like he loves to just gallop and go, doesn't yeah. he? I mean, he just has that gorgeous canter. And yeah, so anyone with questions, uh, please feel free to slide into our DMs. Jeffrey Hesslink or Sissy Wicks. For anyone watching, wondering what's going on. Jeffrey with a G. With a G. <laughs> Sissy with an S. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jen Hannon leading the way. So with that little peak in the first yeah, round, yep. Sterling's now in 10th place. Twenty five thousand, yay. Yeah. That's very exciting. Next we have Jennifer Wright, Casario. Yep. 
Horse just maybe just took a little stare at the first jump. Be a little distracted, he's cross cannoned a few strides. Just a little wide eyed, right? Yeah. Jennifer's giving him a good ride. I think same thing, just gonna jump the low option, try to give him a nice experience in here. Just a little distracted. Again, preparation for things to come. Yes. I think this horse competes in the amateur owners with his owner, so maybe she's just doing this round, get a little experience, get him a little more comfortable before the coming weeks. You know, we're, <coughs> we're so used to riding in a certain size ring. The horses kind of bounce off the ends sometimes to get their lead changes yeah. and figure out where they are. And in a huge arena like this, they can kind of get lost. Yep. She's doing a great job just letting the horse take his time. She knows at this point with the rail down that he's probably going to be out of the ribbons. So it's giving some nice confidence, taking her time. Starting to take a breath. Yep. Nice right. finish. Really nice finish. All right, so Jen Hannon still at the top by seven points over Greg Krolik. And she's 13 points ahead of Brady Mitchell. Is that I know Brady's horse is a new horse for him. It looks like it went really well. I missed it. Yes, he went quite early. I believe he went second or third in the order. Um, and the horse went around lovely. Here's the queen. Yes, Queen Celeste, another veteran resume too long to list. This horse has won almost everything there is to win in the hunter world. Nick Hannes from Temecula, California, although he's so bi-coastal now. Doesn't even seem much like a California anymore, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's riding for the Ingram family, Corette family, and Tom Wright. This horse owned by Laura Corette. She's one of my favorites, not to be biased, but she is one Just of my lovely, favorites. Just lovely, lovely yeah. person, great supporter of the sport, longtime friend and uh, rider with Tom Wright. I know Nick loves this horse. Yes, he does. What's not to love? That was beautiful. Yeah, jump. yeah. And she goes with her head and neck stuck out and yeah. very light contact, which I love. Yes, and gets there and makes beautiful efforts. Yeah. She's so sharp and makes correct jumps. Beautiful. Just let her take her time there. She yeah. peeked at a little bit. and She definitely looked into that vertical a little, yeah. but Nick just kind of held her hand and said, you're all right, and the yeah. horse still made a beautiful just jump. jumped up to it, yeah. Again, I, I think, again, I didn't walk that course, but that two-stride goes right into the VIP area. Yes, I think a few horses kind of jump the double and look up and maybe get a little distracted through it. And I think they want to drift right there. Yeah. So it's important to make sure they're in the middle or a little left of center so that the th there's no lead change issue or directional issue there when you land. Because it's, it's a bit spooky. Yeah. They're looking at what people are having for lunch there. Yeah. <laughs> Nick's decided to take a few of the lower options in this handy portion, uh, although doing it beautifully. 
Um, beautiful drop jump. And great finish. Wow, yeah. One of the best combinations yep, out there. Yep. The two of them. Absolutely amazing horse. Boy, the jumps look gorgeous, don't they? They do. Jason did a beautiful job. Jason Shelley, of course, designer. So just one point behind Jennifer Hannon. He actually was one point ahead in the first round. And just slipped behind her in the overall. Next we have Arabesque and Aquitaine Equines, owned by Aquitaine Equine, ridden by Clara Prop. Showing us how she floats across the ground. This horse is <laughs> well named. Absolutely incredible. Top mover. It's won everything there is to win in the junior hunter divisions. I think Clara is now going to focus on these derby classes with her. Um, since she's essentially won everything there is to win in the junior hunters. Horse got a little, little peaky there down that line, swapped her lead a few times. Claire is doing a great job. Another just amazing horse. Beautiful. This is another one that looks like it would be so much fun to ride, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I would love to ride this horse. Who would your pick be? If someone said, Jeffrey, you can ride my horse in this classic, in this WCHR class on Saturday night, who would your pick be? Other than your own. <laughs> Other than my own. Um, yeah, not yours. I have always loved Queen Celeste. That's one of my favorite horses. I think I would really enjoy riding her. Um, and I've also always wanted to ride Cannon Creek, another top derby horse of Hunt Tosh's. Really nice finish. Now, those are two very different types of horses. So they are. Interesting. Yeah. They are. Look at that trot. It's insane. The movement <laughs> on this horse is incomparable. And sometimes when they move like that, they don't use their shoulder yep. great. Um, and she Not does it all. One. Yep, she does it all. Maria returning on her second horse.
again, I feel like I've said this a few times, but uh, Worthy, one of my favorite horses. Incredible jumper. Maria's had much success with him. Beautiful. This horse is owned by Sunset View Farm, which is the Hamill family who have been incredible supporters Great of, supporter of, yep, the sport. of the sport. And they have a, a foundation that supports education, a grant that supports education for riders. They sponsor a class, three foot three class for riders moving up, equitation class that yeah. has a finals at the National Horse Show. So yeah. they've been terrific members of our sport. All right, Sissy, I have a question. Okay. What is your favorite derby ride and why? The f my favorite ride in the history of the derby? Is that what you're saying? Mm, I took it more, what do you like to see in a derby round? What's your favorite when someone rides a derby class? What do you, what do you like to see? I like to see forward riding. Yeah, out of a gallop. Yep. Um, and in this... It's certainly, in, it, it, I've judged derbies in regular size rings where, you know, you can get kind of a difference in a regular round, but mm -hmm. it's a little more difficult. But when you're on a huge field, quote unquote, field like this, then you really should expect <coughs> a forward riding yeah. course. Yep. Um, so I love to see that. I love to see a kind of a loose flowing rain so that everything is met out of stride. Um, I still like to see a, a fair moving horse. I don't love... Uh, personally, this is just me personally. I don't love a real climbing mover, mm -hmm. um, but it's you know if it's the best jumper, it's the best jumper. But yep. it still is not my favorite attribute. Yeah. Um, I love the handies to be super handy. I mean, this is the the best of the best. Yep. So that's uh, that's what I like to see. So it's 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 something that is that it exceeds what we do day in and day out. Yeah. The, the jumps exceed our normal jumps in terms of their their fill, if you will, how much flowers are around them. The oxers are wide. They're impressive. You can yeah. just see them panning there. So I think the horses should also do something more special than what yeah. we see when we judge round after round after round. Yeah, and although we've seen a few horses be a little on edge today, a true derby horse should be able to do this course out of a gallop and be incredibly handy, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's something I, when I ride in a derby class or in the derby finals, I always, always try to ride out of a gallop or a forward rhythm. Yes, I mean, you want to, you want it to make it look like you are doing something special, yep. that you are, quote unquote, going for it, right? And you've got the jumps to help the horse jump well and, and impress the horse. You want to try to impress the judge. The courses are usually challenging and yeah. and the good horses rise to that challenge yeah um and of course every good horse can have a bad day but yeah um it's just in general you you want to reward excellence next we have front page written by colin sakia it's another amazing derby horse he's had much success this horse won the tier two derby championships uh not last year but the year before Incredibly scopy horse. I know Colin uh, thinks very highly of him. I admire Colin so much because he, he brings along the young horses. And believe it or not, in our world, there aren't a lot of people who want to do that anymore. Yeah. It, a, it's incredibly Beautiful. expensive to have horses, right? It is. To put the time in and bring them along slowly. Yeah. And the time and the patience and the skill, and he's got all of it. Yeah, and this horse's owner, Cynthia uh, Sulzberger, is a, again, a great supporter of the sport, great supporter of him, and has allowed him to keep this horse and produce it and supported him to bring him along, which is great. Beautiful, isn't he? Lovely. He just maybe <coughs> rubbed a few jumps here and there, but overall, overall I think it's quite a good round. There he goes, look. 
Really that was nice. a great ride. Good finish. So that was brilliant to the last jump, which I think is what we want to see. Yeah. I th I was not counting, but from what I could see, that was one, one less, less ride yep. than most yep. people are doing. So they try to circle for soundness. That's our new protocol since COVID. There's no more jogging in. In, s in some horse shows, you can jog in, and some do. But in a lot of horse shows, we just jog a circle at the end to show soundness. Yep. So 84.5 and 92 puts him in fourth place, right behind Greg Krolik and Testify right now. It's a lovely round. Next we have five line and Savannah Embley. You had a good horse with a spot on its belly. I did, yes. I still his name is trademark. Oops. He was oh. Oh I know him, yes. Yes. Chestnut with white, like that. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Just like that. Um I'm kind of a sucker for the spot on the belly. You are. You, uh, I don't know if you recall this, but you were judging when <laughs> uh, I got the highest score I did on him. I got a 95 oh. World Champion Hunter Week a number of years ago. Um, well, good for one me. One of my favorite rounds on him <laughs> of all time, and I remember you were judging. Oh, that's nice. That's not a score I throw often, so that must have been... Very impressive. He was quite a, there is quite a jumper. He is quite talented. This horse just had a bit of a miss at the first jump, yep. and now he's settling into it. Yeah. Actually looks quite relaxed. She's doing a nice job. You saw her just reach up and kind of pat him after that first jump, too. Yep. That was a nice thing to do as a rider. Yep. Just going around, giving him a nice go. Oops. What a sweet horse. He really is. He's going to trot the 3-6. We love yeah. that. <laughs> So did you answer that question? The wh what do you like to see in a derby round or what's your favorite derby round? I didn't. Uh, my answer is going to sound very similar to yours. Um, I like to see a gallop. I like to see forward riding. I like to see specifically risk taking. Mm. I think normal hunter rounds day to day, it takes a lot of perfection and methodical detail oriented riding and I like to see s in the derby some risks I think it's an opportunity to show off the horse show off your riding ability it's it's just just a different um, a different class than I think normal hunters riding is about so I like forward riding, I like inside turns, handiness, all that. Everything you said, I think I would have seconded that. Next we have Greg Krolik and Catwalk. He's currently sitting third with his first horse, Testify. This horse really excels in this ring as well. Yes, he does. He's had a, a great deal of success in, in the in the Derby world.
like you said earlier, Greg is such a master derby rider again. He's so seasoned in these and he's so calm and this class looks like just a normal class for him, which I think is sometimes important when the horses are building and they're maybe they're a little more excited. He's so calm mm -hmm. and, yes. and gives the horses nice nice energy. Nice high option there. I usually see most of him in, uh, him most in Michigan. So he's a Midwestern guy. Yes. He's got a daughter that rides very well, which is fun. Yep. See the next generation come along. Again, I love that angle because you can see everybody just, <coughs> excuse me, stay a little bit left of center to manage that right hand turn, that fairly sharp right hand turn. Beautiful. Great rhythm here. Yeah. The horse looks relaxed, but he's engaged. His ears are forward. He looks really happy to jump around this course today. Do you like the hunt and go format where you, you don't come back and kind of have a ride off? I think if I were to choose, I would prefer the original, more classic format. Um, but I think there's something kind of exciting about uh, a hunt and go. I've done a few of those more recently. Nice round for Greg. Um, and I do, I like the mental side of this round. For me, I try to break the round apart and I want the first part of the round to feel relaxed and stylish and the horse calm and taking a breath. Um, however, in my head, I'm thinking as soon as I land from the last jump in the classic portion, how can I be handy? What can I do? And uh, sort of turn it on per se. Um, I think it's fun. I, I think a lot, you know, I'm lucky to have some great horses that I think respond really well to that. They're able to turn, turn their ability on and put in a good handy round right off that. And I think that is the point, to w when you go through the shrubs and you start the next part of the course, you start the handy course, I think to show a change of riding and a change of rhythm and a change of speed is really smart. Yep. Craig got some great scores, 90.5 and 87.5, puts him right behind his first ride. So he's currently sitting third with Testify and fourth with Catwalk. So we have Jennifer Handen and Mindful on top, Queen yep. Celeste and Nick Hanna second. And then Greg Krolik sitting third and fourth. Yep. Good day for him so far. Next we have Waterloo, written by Kate Conover. I don't know that I've seen this horse. Do you know this horse, Jeffrey? I believe this is a horse um, in Alex Hammer's stable. Uh, I think he is a first-year green horse this year, so for sure on the greener side for a class like this. Um, but Kate's ridden him a few times, I think, in the Young Hunter divisions. And He's got the right rider yep. on him if he's a little green. Cause Definitely. Kate is a master. She's going to jump the low option there, maybe knowing his greenness a little, just giving him a good ride. That was beautiful to hold the lead there. She's so good at, at kind of making horses brave without rushing them. She's yep. just an incredible rider. A little rub there. Yep. Again, I think he maybe looked up into the stands and forgot his hind end for a sec. Horse just stepped off his lead, uh, swapping in front of that. Oxer. Very good back there to that vertical. I think he's learning so much as he goes. Yeah. yeah. Great experience. Yeah. He's kind of digesting it and figuring it out. Definitely looks like the right horse for a class like this. Brave, big strides, go be. Boy. 
nice finish. So that was the 24th horse, I think, into the ring. Yes, and I believe we're going to take a drag break. So the scores turned in, and in no high ups in defensive, but the scores of 83.5 in the classic round, a handy round of an 82.75. Overall, a did have one point added out for a uh, second round option. So Kate slides into 11th place with that. Beautiful ride. So we're going to have a drag break and we'll join you when we start again.
to load the ground the way out. Looks like we're about to return to our action here in our hunt and go format. So far, we have Jennifer Hannon and Mindful leading the path to the stage with a score of a 186. Nick Hannon's very close behind with a 185 with Queen Celeste. And Testify and Catwalk will play a bounce with Rick Kroenick are third and fourth. Front page, Colin Tachia in fifth, and Brady Mitchell and an early arrival in our ground here today with Sarah Clarissa is in sixth at the present time. We have 26 to go. We'll be looking for the top 12 to return for the award ceremony, the prize giving upon completion of our $25,000 USHAA International Hunter Derby. Today presented by Blue Creek Spirits, exceptional craftsmanship. We thank them for their very valued support. Back in action now, for the 26 that remain in our competition. Here at Graven, number 3806, to appear on course. Owned by Tracy Fields out of Brewster, New York, and shown by Hannah Isa. This is 3806. And we're back with Hannah Isop, the first rider after the drag break. She's riding a horse named Braven. It's a young horse she's been bringing along. I know she thinks very highly of him. Looks like he's going to be a great derby horse one day. I love the way this young lady rides, too. She's yeah, another top, top yeah. derby rider. Gives horses all the confidence. Did that well? Yep. Oops, lost. That jump's been a little bit yeah. of a boogie jump today, hasn't that it? That seems to be the quote unquote uh, bogey fence. I think with it being a tall option, out of the turn like that, a few horses kind of get caught off guard by it. Uh, it's also. I don't think we can really tell from our angle, but when I walk the course, it's jumping almost directly into the scoreboard, right? Um, which could be a little alarming to some horses. So I think they kind of see the jump and look past that to the screen, and it can be a little bit overwhelming. And it looks like a, s sorry, I have a cold. It looks like a series of walls. Yeah. <coughs> Hannah's just giving her horse a moment, Pat gave him a little pat. Yeah, and the walls are framed by barrels, so there, there's a lot of, of texture and stuff to look at. And as Jeffrey said, you're jumping right into this, the live scoreboard. Yep. I'm yeah, just going to let our horse jump a little low and get his confidence back a little. I received another question, and this one is, what is your most memorable derby ride and why? Um, and for me, I I would have to say uh, the derby finals. Um, I finished second in the derby finals twice, um, and both times, I think there's just, like Sissy and I have talked about, a lot of atmosphere, um, the course is obviously as real as it gets, and it's kind of the epitome of what this is all about and hunter, the top of the hunter sport. So both times were really emotional for me and um, just really meant a lot. Uh, so those would be two of my most memorable derby moments. And one was drum roll, and what was the other one? Uh, in 2016, I rode a horse I owned and produced his name was Cataretto, uh, and that was particularly special to me. He was a six-year-old. Uh, he was the youngest horse in the whole class, and I bought him as an investment horse. I didn't really think he was going to be a hunter, uh, and he turned out to be a great derby horse, and he uh, was 
won uh, most winningest derby horse by money that year and finished second in the derby finals to uh, that year Tori Colvin won aboard Cuba. I remember watching that. That yeah. was fabulous. Yeah, yeah. it was a ex great year, great course. Um, you were kind of a newcomer on that scene, too. It was I was. That was my first year ever doing the Derby Finals, yeah, ever yeah. competing in it. And um, I finished fourth the first day and uh, was finished second after the handy round. So it was a night I'll definitely never And he was a, a tall chestnut horse, right? He was. Big yeah. chestnut horse, lots of white, very brave, a lot of qualities you'd want for a horse for this this type of event. Next we have Eleanor Hellman and Gijon. Eleanor is another amateur rider. Uh, she's produced this horse basically herself in the hunter ring, done a beautiful job. I uh, know Eleanor and her family well. I used to help them and ride a few horses for them, and they're, a, again, big supporter of the sport. Um, Eleanor is a great, great amateur rider. This horse used to be a jumper. He's adorable. Look yeah, he's absolutely adorable. Beautiful expression on his face. Yep. Really cute. You know, I also think as they come by there, there there's a, a scoreboard, and then there's the live on the left-hand side. So they come around, they look at the there scoreboard to the right, yep. and then all of a sudden they're making a left turn to kind of a spooky jump. So I think if we get into their minds a little bit, that's what's going on there. A little rub there, but Eleanor is doing a beautiful job. She is. Guiding this horse around. Beautiful. I know she thinks very highly of this horse, and they've kind of come up through the ranks together. Just steps off the lead there. Nice. She went around to the trot, which was yeah. probably smart, right? Yeah, her horse landed on the incorrect lead, yep. and she probably just felt like maybe it was a little f happening fast, and she wanted to take a second. Still slipped inside to the last jump. Nice finish. <laughs> that was a great finish. Good ride. And she's an amateur, you said? Yes. Good she ride. She competes this yeah. horse in the 3-6 amateur owners and the derbies. I think she'll be thrilled with that. Yeah, she gave him a... Wonderful experience out there. Yep. Sissy, would you have a uh, favorite derby ride memory, judging, commentating? I have to say that my favorite derby ride of all time so far is Liza Tal Boyd now. Yeah. On Brunello. Um, Which time? <laughs> yes. Yeah, there were so many. The last one. Yes, that was absolutely. Um, and the, uh, the video of Jack. Jack Tal, her father, riding the entire course with her was, it's priceless. It still just makes yeah. me smile thinking about it. I remember that yeah. was, talk about the epitome of what a derby horse round, everything just cultivated. That was such a special night for the sport. And, you know, their, their partnership was just unparalleled. And yeah. They knew each other so well, and she trusted him, and that last jump was enormous and kind of a long distance to it yep. if, if you didn't have the scope that he did, which he just jumped it like it was, yep. you know, something just part of his daily routine. And it was, uh, you know, the whole family thing. I don't know. I'm kind of a sap that way. Yeah. So I, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Next we have Michael Britt Leone riding True Cassini, owned by Kelly Sims. Whoops, there's that jump again, that little boogie jump. Yeah, this is a first year horse. Again, for sure greener to these classes. Michael again is a top, top derby rider himself. A veteran in these, has a number of top horses and
Yeah, he and Kelly have quite a partnership with incredible hunters. Private Eye being the most famous of them all. Yes. I assume we will see him Hunter Week. I would think so. This horse is a great jumper. A little conservative to that last jump, which I think is wise. Wow, Jumped what a good jumper. Amazing. That's a nice horse. Beautiful. Michael's just giving him a nice pat. I think that was a good experience for him. He'll come I back better for next <coughs> time. I think we'll see him out here again, be my guess. So this is Stephen Gregorio coming in next, and you see he walked up to the jump that they've been spooking at, and the horse decided that was an eyeful, didn't it? Yeah. Stephen's a great horseman. I think that was honestly the right idea. Yep. And myself, if I was doing the class, I would probably do something similar, learning that a few horses have been uh, a little caught off guard by that. But unfortunately, I think the horse... Uh, did take some backward steps in the yeah. entrance, so we'll see. Uh, yep. We'll see how they handle that in the scores. Steven is rides for Bill Schaub, very accomplished trainer. I don't think I've seen this horse before. This is a horse um, Bill and Stephen have been bringing along, and they think that these classes are going to be what his forte is. Forte is, yeah. which I would agree. He looks quite scopy. I watched him do a derby in oh. the fall. Does not like that. No. I think it's the barrels. I think you're right. I think just all of it in yeah. a line like that. Um, it's, it's a lot, lot to take in yeah. Very off of different. such a short yeah. turn. Yeah. A little correction with his stick. Oh my goodness, he wants no parts of the barrels. Nope. And you couldn't be any further away from the end gate, and they want to go home. Yeah, not their day today. I think Bill Schaub's going to be going to Home Depot and buying some barrels. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to guess. All right, I think they're going to give him one more chance here. There we go. So here's a question. Yep. What do you think is a good prep routine for a derby's finals horse? Meaning classes, other derbies or divisions, and shows leading up to the finals, fitness levels, etc. It's a great question. Uh, I think everyone maybe has a little bit of a different answer. However, for me, 
I like my hunters, and especially horses, derby horses like this, I like them fit. I like them to have stamina, um, especially for the derby finals. Those jumps are basically the biggest you'll ever see in this side of the sport. Um, and I think both rounds take a lot out of them. That being said, a lot of horses can have some nerves similar to like we're seeing now. Um, so I always try to do classes uh, with a lot of atmosphere uh, where they can feel the pressure, they can feel the uh, you know electricity in the air, the excitement, um, so that they're not so caught off guard in the event. Um, I think typically brave horses are the ones you see really shine in that event. They have the spookiest jumps. Um, so yeah, that that's uh, how I prepare. I, I you know I do my horses. That I hopefully qualify and try to do them in the Hunter Spectaculars, Derbies throughout the year, things like that, uh, just to give them experience and uh, show them something different rather than a normal hunter division or class you know having said that there are so few classes at night for these hunters it's true so most of the time it's you know with the younger horses or the horses that are just being translated to this you're you're at some point you're going to walk in at night for the first time <laughs> yep and if it's a venue like this versus a smaller ring it's it's a big ask and it always amazes me when the younger ones just take a breath and do it Yep. Because I fully expect them to, to have a, a reaction to it. Yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's the, I think the more classes like this we have, the more opportunity we have to train our horses to, to do this, the better result yep. for finals. And obviously you can do as much as you can, but I do think, you know, you look at the list of this class, for example, even though they have the top hunter riders in the country riding them, uh, those horses have all had vast experience in these classes. They've done derby finals multiple times, derbies, night classes. So, you know, I think each time they do it, they also learn something, get a little more comfortable, understand what it's about. Oh, absolutely. Just like anything else, you train them. This is a, another uh, top derby horse. Uh, probably one of the best jumpers I've seen in classes like this. This horse is uh, very scopy and can put on quite a show, jump in very perfect style, very high and round. Uh, Jacob's won a few derbies on this horse. Uh, I believe gotten some ribbons at the derby finals. Beautiful jumper. Jacob's such a good rider. And, and here's a rider that <coughs> is competing internationally. Yes. Doing both the pursuing the jumpers and the hunters. Beautiful. It is. I do think some of the horses think that they're going right after that first line. Yes. Just needs a little direction to tell them left. Oui, wow. Jump that well. Yeah, so Jacob, it's it's so unusual in this day and age not to be a specialist. And there are, what, a handful of riders that are able to compete at the very highest levels and both hunters and jumpers, and Jacob is one of them. Yep. A Maryland boy. Yes. Love that. And I don't know a nicer person. Yeah, Jacob's had, you know, he came up, he won the EAP, he won the McClay finals and the USCT finals. He's had success most of his career. He's a natural. This horse just looks so fun to ride. It does. Wow. Knees Whoops. to the chin. Well, just I think she thought she was, or she or he, I think it's a mayor, right? Yep. Yeah, I thought she was trying to ride. Again, may maybe just getting a hair on the muscle in this second portion doing a good job of just slowing it all down. It's also early in the year for these guys. It's February. Yep. Today the second or third. I don't even know. It's Groundhog Day. Yep. Yeah, the horses are fresh. They've had a yeah. nice break. This is really the first real event. Yep. Definitely first event in this ring for the year. Um, 
And so hopefully yeah, they've all they've all had time off, right? Yep. What was your answer to that question, Sissy? What what do you think about that? You know, preparing? I think like with everything else in this business, it depends on the horse. Yep. Um, I think it, it's just like we talked about you peaking, trying to peak week six or a tennis player trying to peak at Wimbledon or whatever. You have to see yep. what your physical status is of your yep. horse and you for that matter um, <laughs> and see what's available to in terms of a schedule that fits with the rest of your life. Yep. You know, it's hard to off mic we were just talking about the pin oak horse show in texas which have a, has a great derby yeah but if you have your business in wherever the northeast or here for that matter it's hard to just say okay my derby horse needs a derby it just yep. doesn't work like that yeah that's so a good point yeah so you have to kind of see what your owners are willing to do yep um what fits into your schedule and work at your end goal and then plan backwards i think some horses are more just like people are more naturally fit than others um and uh, so for the ones that are maybe a little chunky and and need the the wind and the fitness you plan differently than one that's kind of naturally fit and you don't want it to be racehorse fit at derby finals yes that's um it's a good so point. it's it's and, and you know a lot of these horses have dual roles so my amateur wants to show this weekend or next weekend, and therefore my derby horse is not going to do the derby or, yep. you know, whatever it may be. So Yeah, that's a very good point. You know, I, I would obviously love to be doing this class with drumroll, but yeah, exactly. I think in planning his schedule diligently, that was not the best setup for him in maybe the next coming weeks. So we sat this week out, and we'll uh, look towards uh, week six. We we're just talking about how rare it is to have a, a dual specialist. This is one. Yes, Molly Ash Collie, a board pop star. Top, top, top international jumper rider. You can see that in the way she can just whip back to a big vertical like that. She's had this horse for a number of years. Mother of two kids, one of whom is a whoops. very, whoops, illustrious junior rider, very yes. talented junior rider. Yep. A little extra canter step there. So here we are at this hunt and go class, $125,000, yay, for the hunter world. 25000 Oh, shoot, I thought they said 100 <laughs> Gee, I nice. got all excited. That'd be nice. Ah, oh, all right, 25000 um, Jen Hannon and Mindful lead with 186 points. Nick Hannis right behind with 185. Greg Kolick in third. Jacob Pope in fourth. So that's our top four. Now we have Richard McGrath riding Tiara. I've not seen this horse before, have you? I'm not familiar, nope. That's cute. Rick is from Western Pennsylvania, Western-ish Pennsylvania. And I think of him as primarily a jumper rider. Doing a great job here. Yeah, doing a great job.
Do you ever consider going to Ocala during the circuit, Jeffrey? Are there any classes there that entice you? I have, yes. Uh, in years past, we've gone for the equitation class, which is actually next week. The I believe it's a hundred thousand dollars, right? Yep, the yep. equitation uh, championship they have there at WEC. Um, I've gone with students in the past, um, and for myself, I've always wanted to go and compete in the larger Derby weekend they have there. Um, I believe also hundred thousand dollar Derby international and fifty thousand dollar national. Right. Um, they do a beautiful job. Have similarly some of the best jumps ring atmosphere that would be another venue yeah w that would be great to get a horse experience in and uh that night Oop, just a little leap to the last it's a nice horse yeah overall great round so we've talked a lot about horse fitness what what do you do as a rider to keep your fitness are you a workout guy i am I, you know i usually ride between uh i'd say an on average like eight to ten horses a day which is a lot um uh, but i do i go to the gym probably four days a week um cardio i'm a tall guy so i try to stay pretty lean i think that's important an important element and i think something that can be um, a little bit an afterthought in the hunter specifically i i think it's important to be fit athletic and uh, strong for this for this uh, type of sport um, i've always believed that if the horses yeah. need to be strong and fit you should be just as strong and fit to be able to ride them I agree. I think the the amount of core strength of sticks is yes. impressive, I think. Yep. Next we have Jimmy Toronto aboard Lascano, another top top derby horse, top derby rider. This combination finished third in the Derby Championships last year. Yeah, moved up from seventh, I believe, yes. in the final round, which yep. was he very impressive. Yeah, a beautiful handy round. This horse has won this derby in the past. Great partnership, these two. Yeah, Jimmy knows him like the back of his hand, and you can always count on them to be incredibly handy, so I'm excited to watch his second half. Yes, if there's an inside turn to be had, Jimmy's taking these it. two are doing it. Yep. I happen to be riding a horse right when this class was starting and Jimmy was out there on Lascano, just loose rein, cantering around. It was, uh, looked like a walk in the park. Yeah. Jimmy also, I think, is a great example of someone who rides out of pace. I think that he really I'm interested to see. He likes to work out of a gallop. That was a great jump. Um, very tidy back here. That was great. Very handy. Handy, but not rushed. Yeah, that yes. was very well done. Wow, I love that. Really neat. He's just so neat everywhere. What do you think, Sissy? I loved it. For me, this is for sure in the top three. It's smooth as glass, right? Yeah, and he's that's barely touching look, the reins. And look, now he's going to leave yeah. us out, so it's great. It was so handy without looking at That was yeah. a great round. Yeah. That was a great, great round. He should be thrilled with that. And again, just the expression of the horse and the horse's loose frame. I love it. I mean, that's huntery. Yep. That was very, very well done. Not manufactured. Yeah. Jimmy looks quite happy with that. Good scores coming in. First round score of 93. Wow. Two bonus options. 
in the first el first half of this. I assume he did all the highs, right? He did. And he moves into second place by 0.5. Oh, man. It's a great round, great ride. That's tough, though, isn't it? Yeah. Next we have Carrie Campson aboard her own horse, Citation. This is Carrie's derby mount. Yeah, she's had a lot much success with him. He's been successful in the Junior Hunters, he's high performance. He's a huge, rangy horse. He's yes, he could jump a mountain. Uh, yeah. Oh. Oops. No. Oh, I'm glad she had a vest on. She has a has had a couple injuries this year in the last few months, so I'm glad she's okay. Yeah. She's, she's up, up and all right. Yeah, yeah. She hasn't had a great couple months. She told me she had the stomach flu. I mean, the whole nine yards. Yeah. We wish her only the best. Yeah, you know, that horse, the same thing we've seen a few times. He came out of the turn. He, he did take a little look, but she was very diligent and gave him a good ride to get over it. And then uh, it looked almost like on takeoff, he then took another almost stutter right. and, and lost his balance. And uh, that was unfortunate. That is a long walk back, isn't it? We've all done it. Carrie will fight another day. Next, we have Haven Shot aboard Diotendro. Owner Kelly Corrigan competes this horse in the amateur owner division. Been very successful. It's been a long, long time partner of Haven's. Haven's again resume too long one of the most successful hunter riders derby riders of all time yeah she i think she had this horse from the outset yep he was a very tall skinny yeah you know sort of he narrow was a stallion he was a stallion a years yep and now is he gelding she i think has brought him along as she does so magnificently yep she's a real rider this one she is so small and still, but so effective, yeah. and the horses are just so in tune with what she's asking. It's a big, scopey horse, just stepping these jumps so easily. Just a little rub there, the high option vertical. So easy for this horse. It is. It's a beautiful look, isn't it? Yeah, stunning. And I think Havens is one of the most stylish riders. So still. Yep. She looks like she did when she was a junior. Yes. <laughs> kind of timeless, right? Yeah. 
chooses to go low there. Same quiet, easy rhythm mm -hmm. all the way around. Beautiful. Certainly a different type than Jimmy's, yep. just the way this horse is built, but the same idea of smoothness. Very handy there, too. It's a good round. It's very nice. I think we'd see her in the in the ribbons at this point. Yep, high, high end of the list. Yep. That horse we will see Hunter Week. Yes. First round score is in, and it's a 90.5, so very good first round, a 90 second round. So she slides into fourth place. Right behind Queen Celeste and Nick Hannis. It's a great round. Conover is back. Aboard Caristo. A horse that she had as a green horse, pre-green horse, or green 3-3 three three horse, we call them now. It's a great horse. Uh, his owner, John Ingram, has much success with him and the amateur owners. Uh, and he also is always competitive in the professional divisions with really whoever's riding him. This horse is no relation to Ralph Caristo. I want you to know that. <laughs> String, good job. Maybe looked a little, a little fresh down that first line. He peaked at that jump in a good way. Yes, <laughs> jumped up beautifully. Jumped way up. He does look a hair impressed, doesn't he? Great expression this horse has. Yeah, beautiful across the ground. Uh, that's too bad. Just jumped a little bit crooked there, and that yep. can happen. And they slide across that back rail. That's too bad. I think that gate draws them a bit as they jump that oxer. And again, he's a he's a fairly inexperienced horse. Not their day, but it's a great round. So that rail will throw them into the 45-ish range. Down to a total of 13 to go. 
Here's Royal AM, the second line for John French here in our lineup today. We carry the number 4957. John joins the Robinson Ridge to Wellington with Royal AM. 4957. Now we have John French aboard Royal AM for Robinson Ridge. Katie Robinson owns this horse. He's had much success in the pre-green division, and this year he's a first-year green. So not a beautiful first jump. Not as experienced as some of the horses, but I'm sure John will give him an excellent ride. Oh, yes. I assume this will be Katie Jacob Robinson's amateur horse at some point. I think so. Which is very exciting. Beautiful jumper. Beautiful. This horse also, I believe, has a background in the jumper ring before transitioning to a hunter. So John's, you know, doing an expert job to see how still and quiet he's sitting and just letting the horse kind of nicely relax around the course, giving him a great experience, a beautiful jump there. Oh, come on, buddy. Oh, shoot. Aww. Gate, gate, gate. Yeah, it looked like he just shifted towards the gate yeah. there, huh? Yeah, he just lost his hind end. He kind of swung his rear end toward yep. the gate. Again, a green mistake. Yep. But, I mean, the quality of this animal is indisputable. Yeah, and John's giving him, you know, a little training moment, a little reset, and now he's going to finish the course, hopefully just as well as he started. Beautiful jumper. How many do we have left? 13 left. 13 left. There we go. Whoops. This horse is just a little frazzled, but yeah. Finishing nicely. Good, nice last Just a little bit wor worried about what's next, but John will coax him through that, and we will see him another day. Yep. Again, I'm 99 percent sure it's that horse's first Derby experience ever. He was a three foot three green last year, so. Um, That's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's a great first go, and I'm sure he'll he'll get this down in no time. Oh yeah. And here is your girl, Sissy. Yes, Georgia Schmidt, Maryland girl. Or Triton. This is Georgia's first derby ever. She just became an amateur, aged out of the juniors. She's super excited to be doing this. A little nervous, I think, but super excited on this horse. Yeah, what a great horse to do this on. I love him. I love riding him. Great start. George has been a top rider for many years. Her mom, a beautiful rider as well. They've been a great supporter of the sport. Nice. I can't believe how nervous I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> for no good reason. Aw, good boy. Nice. a pretty horse, isn't he? Beautiful horse, beautiful mover. 
He looks right at home in this ring. He really does. Easy boy. He's been in here for a total of half an hour in yeah. his life. So I was at 6.15 this morning. Oh, good girl. Nice ride, Georgia. I nice don't work. know if she's nervous, but sh her composure and her ride around the ring is expert. Look at Beautiful. that. Beautiful. Wow. Beautiful style. She's so so pretty on a horse. She really is. She's just a, a good human, too. Excellent. Oh, boy. Yeah, she decided she wanted to go around yeah. there, which is great. Nice. She did all the low options. What a great oh, experience. Oh, yay. Yes, isn't that nice? Oh, get your stirrup. <laughs> Good thing this is an equitation. That was great. Good girl. Super. Yep. I hope she feels good about that. She should. Yeah. Very composed. Horse was perfect. Yeah, whoever set that horse <laughs> up must know something. Katie Cooper. <laughs> Katie Cooper. That was great. Good good job. Again, that's what I think is so fun about this this division is people aspiring to do this and yeah. yeah getting ready to do it and it's a it's a big uh, a big achievement on their yes. calendar so it's very nice i think that was a great experience and now we go from the brand new to the very very seasoned in poker face yes one of my favorite yeah. derby horses i think he's what 17 this year 18? yes Jennifer Bliss on her own poker face. Like says he said, is no stranger to this ring and success in these classes. Jennifer has two kids, Lulu and Poker Face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he almost lives in the house. She started him from a, a very young inexperienced horse. Yes. I think Jen and this horse know each other so well. Um, their partnership is just something special to watch. They just, looks like they just have fun together out there. And I think like we were talking about earlier, this horse's uh, schedule is probably scheduled around these events. And this is sort of his specialty. Um, he's a seasoned horse and a great jumper. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, my guess is that she sits down. Look at him. He's mm -hmm. enthusiastic. She sits down and decides exactly where she would like to go yes. with him and checks in with him physically and mentally to see yeah. what he wants to do. And I believe he did derby finals last year. I he mean, did. He should have had a great, great rounds. Yeah. Yeah. So he's he's still on his game. And I, and I think that's this partnership and her incredible care of him is yep. is to thank for that. Great ride there. I think there we saw, mm -hmm. again, we've seen it a few times with that jump where it's placed. You know, the horses know the gate is there. This is not this horse's first time in this <laughs> ring. He <laughs> no knows that's the end gate. Um, and he just shifted a little bit left on her. Um, yeah, he's got an armband to get in here. He's been here so much. Yeah. <laughs> um, he just had a couple steps late behind. Yeah, she's doing a great job. But he looks 
he looks like a young horse, doesn't he? He does. He him. looks wonderful. Yeah. So scopy. Incredible. A foot over the jumps. And my guess is that she is getting him ready for Ook. Yeah. <laughs> He's just for a little excited. For week six, and Cheeky old man, beautiful. I love it. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? He looks good and feels he's, good, so. He's great. Jen smiling, it's so smile. nice to see. Really jumps as good as it gets. Yep. We have Sophia Grumbly aboard Carsandro. This horse looks like he could do many, many rings, doesn't he? Yeah. He looks quite Equitation relaxed. Equitation hunter. Yeah, I'm sure he's done jumpers. At ease with this. Now, he never thought about going right. That was amazing. Nope. Just straight as an arrow. I stepped over that high option. horse looks like he could do this all day, Jeffrey. He's yep. just in the groove. So relaxed. Going right around. Jumps them all the same. A little rub here, a little rub there, but beautiful. Such an honest, kind looking horse. Oh, like fun absolutely. Ride. She's a beautiful rider, too. Yes. She dresses them up. few little rubs, but quite a nice round. Mm -hmm. Very accurate. Yep. And just a calmness to it, a relaxed energy. Really nice. Really nice. Yeah. The young lady rides very well. So we're nearing the bottom of the class. Yes. And it's very tight at the top. We have, what, one point uh, differentiating the third horse and the first horse with yep. a 0.5 in second place. So it doesn't get, it can get closer, but it doesn't usually get much closer than that. For Sophia and Garcandro, a 77 plus two and a 76, 75 plus one. That'll total up and add up to 156, 75, 156, 75. Now the way in now here is number 15, 14. This is the young member of LDA Campari. Here's both the owner and the Elias from Bermuda. Number 1514. He's showing him that corner. Yep.
Lopez aboard LB Campari. It's from Bermuda, which you don't see very often. I know I want to be from Bermuda. Yeah. It's one of my life goals. <laughs> Sissy's been in Bermuda so long, she's now from Bermuda. Yeah. <laughs> Horse looks maybe just a touch yeah, a little impressed. on edge in here. Yeah. First time, probably. Yeah. Here we go. I think this young man is still a junior, isn't he? I believe he just aged out. Oh, did he? Yeah. I feel like I've seen him at the ring for a long time. Oh, there he goes. Nice ride there. He's doing a nice job on he this is. horse who looked like he might want to be a little bit worried and now he's loping right around. He's doing a nice job. Seem like there's so many jumps, doesn't it? Yes. Again, the horses are used to jumping what eight, nine jumps. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a different track. So that's the track that uh, we saw with the first rider, Maria Rasmussen, did that. But I haven't seen it since then. She didn't do on the second horse, though, did no, she? No, she huh. just did on the first one. Interesting. Wee. Nice last jump. What do you think about that turn? It's a little windy. Yeah. It's not quite as smooth as the other, but mm -hmm. I think if your horse does can that, do it well. if, if it wants to turn yeah. right like that, again, depends on the horse. I'm not sure that would come to my mind mm -hmm. first in walking that, but it worked out for him. Yep. Let's see what we do. George Nicholas and L.B. Safari of a 79 plus 2, 73 plus 2, and that'll add up to 156. 156 for the total. So now to our final 10 now in the Hunt uh, Nintendo format. Nine okay, six, final eight, 10. Top of the leaderboard here is Jennifer Wright with the coach of Ostra. Number, entry number 4843 on course. Coach of Ostra is all by right to start outsourcing and outsourcing Next we have Jennifer Wright aboard Cosa Nostra. Here's a question. In an under saddle, what head carriage do you prefer? Uh, well, I think you should probably answer that being <laughs> the experienced judge. I like a loose frame in a hat class. I do too. I want as a rider and a, a judge, I want to see that you're not having to work that hard to keep the horse in the shape you want. Right. He, sh he, sh you know, he or she should be able to move well or the way you want him to without manipulation. And listen, an ideal hunter has that head carriage. So yes. that's the way his head and neck and shoulder are yeah, you shouldn't put on by to. God. Yep. Yes. Um, it, does it always work out that way? No. Yes. Is that the ideal? Yes. So that your horse is relaxed on your hand. If you have a loose rein, he's stretching down. Um, if you have to reframe him every once in a while, great. But you're not, I mean, one of my pet peeves in the world is seesawing on their mouth. Yeah. 
but if you're having to kind of grind him into frame and then let go in front of me hoping I don't see it, I see it. Whoops, yeah. a little wrong there. Um, so, you know, you want a little bit of, of shape to the body, a little bit of shape to the neck. Yeah. Um, but I don't really want to see a, a lot of framing and interference from the rider. Yeah. And I also, don't, don't you think the, the, um, the mistake also is going a thousand miles an hour at the trot? Yes. I Ooh, Ooh. Ouch. She's up. She's fine. Um, yeah, that, that, when they have to get their feet off the ground that fast, they doesn't really show off their movements as well. Yes, I, th I think, and I understand as a rider, you, you want to do as much as you can to show off, but um, I think the idea is the horse and the movement should speak for themselves, and that's the entire point of that class specifically. Um, and again, I understand trying to accentuate it, but I think that's a fine line. Oh, I do too. And I, and I think you can. I think you can show them yes. off. I mean, it is it is a performance class. Yes. So when you walk in the ring, perform. Yep. Don't trot around and get lost and look bored and have your yes. horse look bored. I mean, show off your horse. Make a first impression <coughs> and then follow through on it. Yep. The other question I get a lot is, do you count more for the trot or the canter? And what I do is I, I make a a note of which yeah, ones I love at the trot, and then I very much study the canter because that's the gate at which they're going to jump, yep. and that's the gate for me that really determines their athleticism. Yep. Next we have Greg Krolik aboard Chappie, and he is definitely one of my favorites. I love this horse, yeah. Um, this is just such a Again, a veteran, amazing, scopey horse, tries to win. Greg competes with him in the high performance in the derbies, and he's won a number of them. He's such a character. He's so cute. He's a steady money winner, too. Steady yes. earner for him. Here's a question. A lot of these top horses seem to stay on the road showing. How much is too much? I, I think... Um, you answered it already, but I, for me, I think it's a horse by horse basis. Um, that was a beautiful job. That was great. Um, you know, more seasoned horses that don't need experience, I think, can show more sparingly. And maybe if it's a younger horse, you're trying to make him up, you you show him a little bit more. I, I think that's a horse by horse situation if it were in my stable. What do you think about that, Sissy? Yeah, and, uh, and I will say that I think there is a too much. I completely acknowledge yeah. that. And, you know, I mean, I'm 112 years old, but back in the day, we didn't show into, we did the National Horse Show, and then the horses all had time off. Yeah. And then Florida was six weeks. Yeah. And then we went to Tampa. And so there yeah. was, it's a, it was a much, there was much less, um, opportunity and maybe inclination to show all the time because yeah. it just was didn't have that availability yeah so you kind of had built-in breaks and yeah. now I think trainers have to be very smart about not just playing into that vortex of I can show every literally every single weekend of the yeah. year and the clients too I mean saying to the clients you know your horse I know you want to show but your horse needs a break yeah I think it's hard to there's so many events and so much going on right now in the sport. It's great. It's modernized a lot, but it's hard to feel like there's breaks where events and classes don't feel important, which is a good problem to have, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, you, you know, you need to manage it well with um, what's important for you and not. Gosh, that was lovely. Yeah, and it was a great round. And horse interestingly, rubbed. your horses don't benefit from you know, being the hamsters on the wheel and no, going over no, and no. over. And, and so ultimately you're not getting the success you want, yep. but it's, it's difficult to not get into that. Yep. I'm on the, I'm on the train. I'm staying on the train kind of thing. Well, I think the judges will like that. What do you think? Uh, that was one of my favorites. Um, you know, he hit, uh, the first jump or the last jump of the first round 
Oh wow, big scores. 89.5, 93.5, so he slides into fourth place. Good day for Greg. He has yes. three horses right now in the top eight. Um, again, I you know we said it multiple times, but I think that speaks to him as a rider uh, and derby rider. He's as you know this is his, he's a specialist at this. And he's had these horses for a while. So yes. again, speaking of how much is too much, um, he's been competing these horses successfully, and obviously they're happy and doing this well. So. Caroline Whedon back for her second ride. Carl's a big part of the sport, very involved in the WCHR, Derby, USHA programs and uh, She's really smart. I, I enjoy working with her a she lot. Is, I'm on a great. bunch of committees with her. and She and I have new granddaughters, so. Oh, that's exciting. That's very exciting. Hers is newer than mine. I think Carl just has some younger horses, greener horses. She's getting some experience in these classes. Yeah, she has a, I would say, an amateur-centric business, wouldn't yes, you? Yes, yeah. yep out of Chicago. Giving this horse a great ride. I'm not sure what happened there. It jumps right toward the gate. Yeah, I think uh, it has <coughs> some pretty substantial gray coops in front of it. Hasn't been that much of an issue, but maybe her horse just needed a second to get his eye on it. Comes right back around, jumps it well. As a judge, do you prefer the beautiful overall picture that moves and jumps really well? or the 10 plus jumper that might not be the beautiful type? Um, for me, uh, I think that would, it would depend on the class specifically. Um, ideally, I would love a horse that has all those <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, I think for a class like this, uh, you can have a little uh, more uh, conventional movement, maybe a more equitation-y look and still have success. Uh, for a normal hunter class, I, I prefer classic, uh, good movement, beautiful across the ground, but um, what about you, Sis? Yeah, I mean, you don't want to, I guess the question here is how do you weigh those factors? Yeah. <clears throat> and I think that that depends on like everything else on the animal yep, and on the class, you know, our job is to rank the class. So yep. um, if there is a beautiful horse, beautiful mover <coughs> and he's, he goes around and has eight great jumps. Does that beat um, an equitation type bad mover horse that also finds eight jumps? Probably yeah. for me, for me. Um, I mean, I still think movement matters. I still think look matters. I would agree, yep. Um, and that that is a, people get upset. People get upset that my horse jumped so well and you made him, you didn't let him win or you, yeah. you didn't like him as much as I thought you would have or whatever yep. it is. But um, we're still about looks in this, in the hunter sport, looks and style and yep. way of going. That's written into the description of a hunter is way of we're going. Yep. 79.5 and a 40. Of and I think it's important too that leads into a, a little bit of a different topic that's uh, come up a little bit recently you know it's it's always different 
looking from the judges booth as it is from us sitting here with the screen as it is from the people on the side so I think it's yes. important to keep that in mind um, oh I say that until I'm blue in the face yeah. on, on these <laughs> with these commentaries because yeah. we're looking at what you're looking at and it's a very different perspective from exactly. sitting in the box this is a great old horse of yeah. Rachel and Oliver Kennedy's yep. They've had him, he was a stallion. He had some, I think, soundness and health issues and they have resurrected him to an extent yeah. that is incredible. They do such a good job managing him. Mm -hmm. Molly rides him beautifully. It's a beautiful horse. But I also, in, in response to that question, I, I think it depends on where you are too. You know, oh you're not going to, yeah, he just had a rail there. You're yeah. not going to be in a situation where horses really have it all like we see at this level where we think, my gosh, that thing is everything a hunter should be. Right. So if you have a horse that maybe is a little plain or a little heavy and it jumps a 10, but it, it's appropriate for the hunter ring, then find a place where that horse will be successful. Yep. And if you're up against the beautiful, good moving 10 jumpers and, you know, understand what you're competing against. Yeah. But there is a, there is a place for them, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, Molly knows she had a rail down, but she's doing a great job, having a great round. Looks like she's enjoying the rest of her round with fire today. Yes, and again, uh, it's she's a fairly young rider. She should take this experience yep. and make the most out of it, which I'm sure she will. What a good nice horse. Finish. He looks happy, doesn't he? Very good horse. It's nice to see. He's happy with that. And I don't think he competes that often, so it's great to see him out yep. here. Jacob Pope aboard Swoon. It's a great name, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Jacob already in the top ten aboard his other horse. Let that horse have a little trot up to the far end that's been a place of some spookiness. horse is beautiful. It's really well turned out. Yep. Nice canter across the ground. Really nice to look at. So Jeffrey, we'll have to see if anybody breaks into that that very tight race at the top here. Yeah, 
Only a few left. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be hard to do that. I believe we have five left after this. Wow. They jump that amazingly. Mm -hmm. I've not seen this horse before. I don't know how old he is, but he's really quite impressive. Whoops, little little buck. A little playful. He's little been playful. competing yeah, in not the a buck. You're right. Uh, three foot nine greens. He's a second year horse, like Jacob. I look forward to seeing this one again. Yeah, great experience. Beautiful horse. This might be a week six horse as well. Yep. Nice finish. Wow. Oh, there you go. Beautiful ride, beautiful horse. I love that. It's not perfect, but I loved it. Caitlin Venezia White. Order now, we have an 85.5 substitute for an 87.5, an 87.5 and a handy substitute, and a overall 177. And swimming is taking close to the end our top nine now in ninth place with five more to go. That's a good one. We're going to see that one again, I think. Yeah. First and five left here in the first round, our one round effort held by our International Hunter Derby. Our Hunt and Build format presented by Blue Creek Spirit. Here is the Bellamy and Caitlin Denizia for Sophia Gremley of Stillwater or Still River, Massachusetts. Bellamy, number 1508. So this is owned by the girl we just watched yes. a few horses ago. I believe this is. Her trainer, Caitlin Benizia, riding. Caitlin's a great rider. Great rider, great teacher, Beautiful Holly Hill style, Farm. Yeah. Oh, oh. Involved a lot in the equitation, big part of that community. Looks like she's just giving this horse a nice experience. Very correct, still yes. sitting in the saddle beautifully. Yeah, I love the way she rides. Soft. Great ride there. She also judges a, f a fair amount. I don't think she has a lot of time to it, but she's a great judge. She is a great, great judge. I believe she judged last week. Yep, she did. composed yes and as you said I think she's just giving this horse a great experience yeah. I mean I assume the owner did the last one because this one's a hair green yeah great ride yep okay 
Very nice. Whoops, we're down to the very bottom here. We've got Hannah Isop coming up, Michael Ritleone on another, Maria Rasmussen on a third, I believe, and Haley Gidry on one more. First of four to go. And Hannah Ice is joining us again on her next round for our Hunt and Go format. 3241 is the showing number for Perfect Symphony and her body for the owner's share of room from Concord, Massachusetts. 3241. Hannah Isop has an old partner Hannah named Red Rider, Red who's one of my now. favorite Golf derby horses. Derby That's a great example of an older horse that she manages so well. With the overall leading tally, leading score here in our class of a 186. Yeah, I believe uh, Hannah's stepping in and helping this horse's normal rider, Sarah Taylor, while she's uh, pregnant. They've gotten great pick. Hannah's a beautiful rider. Absolutely. Lovely derby rider, so soft. And I've seen her ride all types and shapes and sizes and greenness. And yeah. I mean, she's just, what just a great catch expert. rider. Yeah. yeah. And this horse looks like a lot of fun to ride. Just towed that. I don't think that's very characteristic of this horse either. I th again, no. they can look up into that VIP and just get a little stiff to their head and neck, and there goes the back rail. That's too bad. Finishing up very nicely. Yep. Like we said, Hannah just an expert at this and beautiful rider. Great horse. It's really too bad. She's yeah. <laughs> it's what we call a cheap rail, right? Yeah. Yep. Sometimes was beautiful. it happens. She been yep. Up there. yep. Yeah, she would definitely be on my catch rider list. Yes, yeah, same. So uh, after this class, this ring gets turned back into jumper land. Yes. This is our brief moment in here. Final three now here in our hunt and go. We introduce second eye for Michael Bird now. This is MF Starboy. This is number 3865, about to head on the course here today. Michael Bernay and Rachel Irwin, operator of Georgia, the owners, and that's Do you know this horse? Uh, I'm a little familiar with him. I, Michael's had him, I think, for a year or two, and I think uh, Ryan and Jordan, a few of his uh, helpers and students, have ridden the horse to much success. and. I believe he's also a first-year horse. Looks like he'll make up to be a great derby horse. Yeah, he does. Very appealing, isn't yep. he? Beautiful look. Michael's a specialist at those. Mm. I 
Every time I walk a course before I do a commentary and I see Michael, he says, now make sure to mention how good I look. <laughs> 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 He's very funny. He's got a great sense of humor. He's a great guy. It really is. It looks fantastic, too. Beautifully turned out. Which, with honestly, with all the rain we've had down here, it's not that easy this year. Mm -mm. <laughs> we've had so much skin stuff. Yep. That was great. Very handy there. Wow. Oh no. Just had the last down, did yeah. he? Yeah, I think the last jump just fell. Yeah, front rail. That's a shame. Bad. Horse got a little enthusiastic, I think, right? Yeah. Very good, though. All right, so Jen Hannon, Jimmy Toronto, Nick Hennis, Greg Krolik, Haven Shot, top five. Five and a half points differentiating them. All right, Maria. Maria Rasmussen could this change this. First half of the remaining two in our International Hunter Derby presented by Blue Creek Spirit. Here's Maria Rasmussen and the amount of SDM changeout. It'll be scored as entry number 3205. SDM changeout is run by the Sunset View Farm of Richfield, Wisconsin. 3205 with one to go. It's Maria Rasmussen aboard. <coughs> SVF change up. This horse, she's been competing in the green confirmation division and they've had much success. Another horse uh, owned by the Hamill family, yep. Kristen Hamill. Beautiful looking horse. It really is. Nice start. Yeah, in an ideal world, the horse comes off the left lead, lands right, and turns right. Yeah. All right? You never need a lead change. Oh, he just got a little to the right there, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. That's what happens. So he for sure thought he was turning right. And she's just going to take her time and, again, probably has some high hopes for him in the next few weeks showing in this ring. So she's just gonna let him have a great experience. <coughs> As you said, he's a green horse. Yeah. So just a very legitimate mistake. Yep. Little miscue. I think it's really hard too if your horse is more one leaded or tends to maybe drift a little to one direction to have that kind of turn built into the course. Yes, definitely. Very challenging. And, and like us, most of them are more comfortable on one side than the other. Yep. Again, such a quality horse. Yeah. Great experience to get in here, and she'll be that much more prepared for next time.
She has quite a deep string of horses right now, too. She does. And she's looking at Saturday night, week six. Yeah. All things being equal. Any of the three horses she rode today, I'd mm -hmm. love to ride. Yep. And a great finish. Yes. Giving him a pat, telling him it was a great, good recovery. All right, one left. One left. Junior. Junior Rider is the last one. Yep. Scores in now in 41 in the classic round, 79.5, added up to 120.5. And we now set the scene for our grand finale of the afternoon. Last on course here in our hunt and go format. Here is the uh, entry of the uh, Cornet Sunshine number 1963. Here with her is the rider for the Outer Hill Farm of Poplarville, Mississippi. 1963, last on course. How fun that she had a couple to do in this. Yeah, great. I mean, it just, so it's nothing but good experience and it will carry over to everything else she does this circuit. Yeah, and I believe this is her equitation horse. Um, nice for a few of these equitation kids. You know, they also have uh, a big class in this ring at the end of circuit. So a few kids, I feel like, did this class in preparation for that. Oh, absolutely. I don't think this young lady's very tall, which means I don't think this horse is very tall. And he's got all the step and the scope in the world. Yeah. Going high option here. Look at that. Nice. She is very well mounted. Yep. Great ride there. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's so maybe not as smooth as some of the hunters that we've seen and little, little this and that, but boy. What a wonderful horse, a wonderful yeah, this ride. This uh, rider is, I know, very experienced and successful in the jumper ring and uh, quite a fast, good jump off rider. So those handy turns looked like she was right at home. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Finish. Very well done. Good for her. Good rider. What a great class. It was. Saw some amazing rounds. Great horses. Course was beautiful. Jumps were beautiful on a beautiful day. Couldn't ask for more. Yep. Good hunter competition. Happy to be here with you yeah. looking at it. Like Sissy, we can thank you for joining we me. We can just watch rounds all day. That's, yeah. that's a real flaw in us, great. but here we are. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. So that will not make our top 12. So Jenny Hannon will win on Mindful. Jimmy Toronto second on Lascano. And Nick Hannis third aboard Queen Celeste. We are going to leave you for the presentation. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right.
Star competition this afternoon, a $25,000 U.S. HGA two-star international hunter derby presented by Blue Creek Spirits. We'll be honoring our top competitors here momentarily. Our thanks again to the support of a new sponsor this year, Blue Creek Spirits. And Blue Creek Spirits passionate about creating handcrafted box and gin that are truly exceptional. Each bottle is meticulously crafted with endless care and attention to detail, ensuring a superior taste and a very unforgettable experience. With every purchase, a portion of the proceeds goes towards initiatives that benefit equine welfare programs, wild horse sanctuaries. So we hope you'll join us on a journey of exquisite flavors and meaningful impact. Experience the artistry of our specialized spirits while making a difference in the lives of horses and those who care for them. Blue Creek Spirits, where craftsmanship meets compassion, and our very special guests will join us out here on the field as well. In our field of play, we have Cynthia Payne, who is the founder of Blue Creek Spirits. Jared Sagan is the Chief Creative Officer, and Gina Lemons is CFO of the Blue Creek Spirits. We thank our, our presenters, ladies joining us for the award ceremony coming away. Presentation of our award coming up, we are going to honor our top 12 in reverse order and congratulating the Worthy and Maria Rasmussen finishing out in the 12th position here in our lineup with Spencer at View Farm of Richfield, Wisconsin. Worthy finishing up with a 12th place award. Another place finish here, here in our class, Sarah Scarusla, Grady Mitchell for the Rain family of Raleigh, North Carolina, coming in for an 11th place honor here today. On the way up down to our winner's circle, we salute our 10th place finisher for the Derby today, Colin Pekia of Ward Cup Page for the owner Cynthia Schultzberger of Wellington, finishing up in the 10th spot. Jacob Hope was ninth and seventh in our lineup here today as we'll congratulate and salute our competitors. They make their way up. We'll move on to the uh, presentation. Haven Shout was fifth with Diana Tendrove and her mounts coming up for our fifth place award. Kelly Corrigan entry out of Lexington, Kentucky. Fourth place going to Greg Krulik and uh, Chappie. Greg was also sixth, so he was fourth, sixth, and eighth in our lineup here today. Catwalk was the eighth place from the Renault Farm, Gross Point Farms. Testify finished out in sixth, owned by John Cotton, and Chappie finished out in the fourth spot, owned by Carol Chase. Congratulations. Third place honors, we'll congratulate uh, Queen Celeste and the mount for Nick Hannis. As we uh, join us now, coming up for the awards for our third place. Nick showing the honors for the Glade Run Farm out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Queen Celeste for the third.
Second place in our competition here today will be Liscano Jimmy Toronto up for the ride out of uh, Wellington. And Liscano into the ownership of Isalu Incorporated of Fort Lauderdale. Liscano for the Red Ribbon, reserve champion and the second place. And ladies and gentlemen, we congratulate our class winner here today, winner of the USHA International Hunter Derby, Derby presented by Blue Creek Spirits and saluting the victory for Mindful and Jennifer Hannon coming up for the top honors. <laughs> 20-year-old Hanoverian gelding on the win here today. Owned by Kinsel and shown by Jennifer Hannon for the victory. Congratulations for the win here today. And again, our salute, Cynthia Payne, founder of Blue Creek Spirits. Tara Stegen, Chief Creative Officer, Gina Lemon, CFO, all joining us on behalf of our Derby sponsor here on our Friday afternoon. Top competitor and top star here today as we wind things down with our photo shoot and we'll honor our top competitors for the round of honor here today and our congratulations.